does something to our spirit. It makes us feel good. And to wear our ancestral atu brings us strength and pride in our people, our ancestors. My mom and my dad made them. Mm -hmm. And they're beautiful. This is a spiritual practice for women. When you raise up the spiritual practice of a woman, you raise up the level of harmonious existence. Working on this canoe by making artwork and studying that and, and diving into that and actively engaging it has become the best way to feel some ownership towards it and, and uh, I guess, belonging to it. Chashakarat ayak kwaheagu kudzati. There is a spirit in everything, our elders say. As I was taught by the late elder Cyril George, Kathkau of the Kakwe D clan. The spirit, the consciousness in all things, is in the land, in the waterways, and in our clinket art. We inherited this knowledge from our ancestors, and their gifts. Their wisdom and spirit always nourish us. For countless generations, our people have refined a special kind of art, an art of captivating, deeply intimate, yet magisterial carvings, weavings, beadwork, and paintings, which represent sacred ancestral crests and histories of our clans. This tradition was maintained by masters who passed on their skills to apprentices who assisted and studied for many years until the day they could become masters themselves. While our people have gone through many changes, that lineage of master and learner continues to this day. Let's spend some time with a few of the families and artistic lineages whose works are present and of today, yet they'd make their ancestors proud and their stories speak to the future. The art tradition was largely created for the Kuig, the potlatch. Beautiful events of songs, dancing, great feasting, and gift giving. At turns, deeply solemn and hugely joyful. They would make a ooh which is literally translated as an owned or purchased thing. They would feast and share their wealth with their clan opposites, so they'd have the privilege to bring out their atu, their sacred objects. Here's my uncle, Paul Marx, Khin Kadunik of the Fukahadi clan. Though he's not related to me, because he teaches me so much, I call him my uncle. Or Kuik, these could you could be for house dedication, totem pole raising, a clean, maybe even for a, a headdress or a hat, depending on what they, how important they want to make. Jenny Thlanat, Shaksani Kik of the Kagwantan clan, was known as the last master weaver of the Nahain, the Chilkat blanket an immensely valued and incredibly intricate art form that comes alive at the Kuik when it is shown and vibrantly danced in. Jenny also showed young weavers how to respectfully share their arts with the wider world, 
even as they continued to create robes for the community. Shortly before her passing in the 1980s, she taught an important workshop for young Tlingit women. Clarissa Rizal Tafsakutla of the Tukhtentan clan was one of her students, and she went on to apprentice for six weeks with a master. Clarissa became a well-known weaver herself, taking on many students, including her daughter Lily Hope, Wush Kinden Da'at. Lily is now weaving a commissioned robe for the Portland Art Museum. She's also my wife, and we're raising four children together. Oh.